How much do you know about the altimeter in your airplane? Altimeters measure height above particular pressure levels. To do this, they compare the pressure of outside static air to the standard pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury, or 113 hectopascal, of air at sea level. Air is denser at sea level than aloft, so pressure decreases as altitude increases. In most flights below flight level 180, your goal is to set your altimeter so that it reads out your aircraft's height above mean sea level. Standard altimeter contains a stack of sealed aneroid wafers with an internal pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury. These wafers expand and contract based on the static pressure inside the casing of the altimeter. This static air enters the casing through a tube attached to the static ports on your airplane. The chamber is otherwise sealed, so only static air from directly outside the airplane enters the chamber. FAA explained that a higher static pressure presses down on the wafers and causes them to collapse. A lower static pressure, less than 29.92 inches of mercury, allows the wafers to expand. Mechanical linkages connect the movement of these wafers to needles on the interior face of the altimeter. Compression of the wafers translates to a decrease in altitude while expansion translates to an increase in altitude. Reading a standard three-hand altimeter is easier than you think. It's similar to a clock. The long pointer measures altitude in intervals of 10,000 feet. The short, wide pointer measures altitude in intervals of 1,000 feet. The medium, thin pointer measures altitude in intervals of 100 feet. What happens when air pressure isn't standard? Across the globe or even across a few miles, different air pressure can have a dramatic effect on altimeter settings. As you fly from high pressure weather systems to low pressure systems, you need to adjust your altimeter to get an accurate mean sea level altitude reading on your altimeter. You reset your altimeter to match local non-standard station pressure readings using the Colesman window on your altimeter. This is usually done every 100 nautical miles for aircraft flying below transition altitude. Where do you get the altimeter settings from? If you're flying VFR, you can tune in to a nearby airport's ATIS. If you're getting VFR flight following from ATC, or if you're on an IFR flight plan, ATC will give it to you periodically. Every point one inches of mercury is equivalent to 100 feet in altitude, and every one hectopascal is 30 feet in altitude. So let's say you took off with an altimeter setting of 29.96, 150 miles into your flight, the pressure dropped to 29.70 inches of mercury. The altimeter would be off by approximately 260 feet in altitude if you didn't make any adjustments. If you kept flying at your indicated altitude, let's say 3,500 feet means sea level, without adjusting your altimeter, you'd be 260 feet low. Remember the saying, high to low, look out below. But by dialing the new altimeter setting in the Colesman window, or the altimeter setting of a glass panel aircraft, you'll read out an accurate MSL altitude. Electronic flight displays do things a little differently. Altimeter readings are generated by an air data computer, which uses the same static air input to measure altitude. However, the static air never enters a diaphragm the same way it does in a traditional altimeter. FAA definition of air data computer is, the ADC computes the received barometric pressure and sends a digital signal to the PFD to display the proper altitude readout. The air data computer uses the same basic concept as a traditional altimeter, but with fewer moving parts. Until here, we learned how to use and how to work an altimeter. Now we are looking for altimeter errors. Altimeter has three fundamental altimeter errors. These are instrument error, barometric pressure error, and temperature error. Understanding these is key for safe altitude awareness. 
Let's unpack each one step by step. One, instrument error. This error stems from mechanical imperfections, calibration drift, wear and tear, assembly tolerances, or slight legs in the static system. Even brand new sensitive altimeters can drift over time. For example, pre-flight checks require your altimeter to read within plus or minus 75 feet of field elevation. If it doesn't, maintenance is needed. During climb or descent, a faulty barometric capsule or internal mechanism can give you inaccurate altitude readings, potentially several dozen feet off. Pre-flight calibrations, periodic inspections per regulations, and functional checks using known field elevation. Always cross-check with reliable sources like GPS or other certified altimeters. Two, barometric pressure error. This arises when the local barometric pressure deviates from standard 29.92 and the altimeter isn't adjusted properly. A common mnemonic, high to low, look out below, Flying into lower pressure makes you lower than your altimeter reads. Conversely, going low to high, plenty of sky. If pressure is above 31 inches of mercury, many altimeters can't be set high enough, so you're actually higher than indicated. If below 28 inches of mercury, you're lower than what your altimeter shows. Operational risks. Missetting your altimeter by just 0.1 inches of mercury equals approximately 100 feet error. In mountainous terrain or during IFR operations, this is serious. Always update your altimeter with current QNH. Controllers give this QNH information. Follow standard procedures. Below flight level 180 in the US, use local QNH. Above, use 29.92 inches of mercury. Three, temperature error. Altimeters assume the international standard atmosphere temperature profile about 15 degrees Celsius at sea level, dropping approximately two degrees Celsius per 1,000 feet. Deviations cause altitude inaccuracies. In colder than standard air, pressure levels compress closer together. So, when your altimeter reads potentially hundreds of feet lower. Opposite is true when it's warmer. You're higher than indicated. In cold approach conditions, you might descend based on your altimeter, but actually be too low, have a real controlled flight into terrain risk. FAA charts help correct altitudes in cold temperatures. Use ATC temperature reports to apply corrections. In very cold climates, Add altitude to your minimum descent altitude or step-down fixes as per published guidance. Let's recap. Instrument error. Mechanical or installation factors. Fix with routine calibration. Barometric pressure error. Misset QNH. Always update, especially with changing weather. Temperature error, non-standard air temp. Make cold weather altitude corrections. By understanding and correcting for these three, you ensure your aircraft's altitude displays are reliable and safe. Now you know how to work, how to use, and how to read an altimeter in flight. Always set the correct barometric pressure when flying, especially in the IMC conditions. Remember, high to low, look out below. Also, we'd learn their altimeter errors? Don't forget to execute pre-flight inspections and checklists during flight. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like the video. If you have any question about altimeter, leave a comment below.